Quorum being present, the meeting will come to order. Would you all please stand and uh, face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, you may be seated. I've nominated uh, Peter Levitt as deputy moderator and uh, would uh, entertain a motion to appoint him. Do I hear a motion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Norton. Seconded, Mr. Danahy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, so vote and declare unanimous. Uh, would the deputy moderator and the tellers please stand for the oath of office? Madam Clerk. Would you raise your right hands, please? Do you solemnly swear to uphold the responsibilities of the positions to which you have been appointed? Thank you. Thank you very much for your service. Uh, I've been advised by the town clerk that the warrant has been properly served. Since the warrant articles are printed in the advisory committee report, which you have for reference, I would entertain a motion to dispense with the formal reading of the articles during the meeting. Motion. It's been moved. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. Discussion there being none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Reading of the warrant is waived. Uh, I'd like to recognize uh, some dignitaries who are present. I saw our state representative, Jim Cantwell, around here somewhere. Uh, he was out in the lobby. Jim, are you out there? Well, maybe he'll wander in. Uh, he is here. Uh, uh, Mr. Norton, did you uh, wish to address the meeting? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to take this opportunity as uh, most of you know, Rick Agnew, our town administrator, retired uh, last summer after 20 years. The Board of Selectmen undertook a, a search to find a new town administrator, and <clears throat> we are very, very extremely happy with the, with the decision that was made, and, and we would like to now introduce to the t to town meeting Trisha Vincasey, our new town administrator. Thank you. Bill. And we have Chairman Johnson from the school committee. Uh, similar to Joe, the school went through a search for a superintendent. Uh, on behalf of the school committee, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sue Martin. Now, a uh, few points about the rules of the meeting. Uh, first, if you intend to make a motion, uh, please state your name and address. Uh, it's for the record so that in future years people know that you are here and active. Uh, secondly, if there's a motion, uh, we'd also like to have a second. Please shout out second so we can hear that and get it for the record. Next, if you have cell phones on your person, uh, please uh, put them to uh, vibrate or turn them off or do whatever you'd like, but no musical tones during the meeting, please. Uh, in order to speak and vote at this meeting, you must be a registered voter and have a voting card. This is a voting card. If there's any non-voter presently on the floor, I'd ask that you move to the non-voting section, which is just over here to my right. This meeting is governed by the rules stated in Massachusetts General Laws, the Town Charter, and the General Bylaws, and by reference to the book Town Meeting Time. After making the motion for each article, the sponsor will be allowed a maximum of 10 minutes for a presentation. You know what? I'm going to change that one. You know, five minutes, okay? Five minutes for tonight. Uh, members of the meeting are encouraged to speak from the center floor microphones. Please introduce yourself by name and give your street address for our record. Speakers representing boards, community groups, or clients should make this clear to the meeting. If you wish to speak, you must speak from a microphone. At our last meeting, we had some people who were unfamiliar with the rules of the meeting and were speaking from their seats. You will not be recognized as speaking from your seat. You will be ruled out of order. Please take your place at a microphone so that your comments can be made in a fashion that's audible not only to the people here in the room, but to those who might happen to be watching it on television. Uh, no shouting out from the floor. No cheering or jeering speakers. That is not allowed. 
You may ask questions of officials. I cannot make officials answer your questions. It's up to you to draw whatever inference you think is appropriate from a, a lack of response. But this is not an interrogation. It's up to the officials to answer if they so choose. Uh, please confine your remarks to the issue on the floor and do not indulge in personal discussions or in any way attack the motives of a meeting member. A motion to end debate needs to be made separately from remarks on an issue. So in other words, please do not get up, make a speech, and then after you've made your point say, I move the question. That isn't how it works. If you wish to move the question, please stand and say, I'd like to move the question. All right. Um, on voice votes, I will listen and declare whether the motion passes or fails. If you question my call, please rise. If seven voters rise, I will ask for a teller counted vote. The tellers will count only those seated or standing from the seats in the bleachers and floor sections. Voters standing away from the seats will not be counted. Persons who stand in the back of the room will not be counted. Uh, section 20,150, subsection G, allows the moderator to declare two, a two-thirds vote without count. If immediately questioned by seven or more voters, uh, we will count the vote. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's see, did uh, 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 the Representative Cantwell is here, so <laughs> thank you for coming. Article 1. Uh, from the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Vignani. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you everyone for showing up this evening. I'll start by reading the motion. I move that the town amend Article Number 5 of the April 13th, 2009 Annual Town Meeting Warrant by deleting the appropriate amount of $52,963,152 and substituting, therefore, the revised amount of $52,607,719 and further transfer the sum of $158,115 pursuant to Article 4 of the 2009 Annual Town Meeting Warrant for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2010 budget as fully set out and atomized in the detail and the materials provided to the members for this meeting. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion, Mr. Vignani. Thank you. Essentially, this is why everyone's here this evening. I'm sure you're all aware that the economy in Massachusetts has changed significantly over the last seven months when we last got together. And it has changed and affected our revenue models that we put together when we did the budget back in March and April. The three areas that it most significantly affected was the amount of money that we get from the state, which was reduced, the amount of money that we budgeted in local receipts, which is predominantly motor vehicle taxes, and the amount of money that we projected to get from new growth of, of new housing. Um, what we're doing here this evening is we're talking about how we're going to balance this. All those changes resulted in about a $350,000 gap. And tonight, we're going to vote on a reduction of expenses to make up for that gap and balance the budget. Um, the Board of Selectmen voted unanimously and approved this article. From the Advisory Committee, Mr. Roberts. Yeah. Excuse me. Thank you. As uh, Tony mentioned, we're looking at three, uh, three big pieces of the uh, budget to come up with the $355,000. Uh, 158,000 will be cut from the capital budget, 100,000 of which will be a uh, bus and a van. The other 58,000 uh, is detailed in your advisory committee uh, booklet. Also on the uh, school side, the school department uh, will cut 132,000, and that too is uh, detailed uh, in your booklet. And then the municipal side will cut an additional, an additional 64,000, and uh, that is line itemed uh, in your advisory committee booklet. And th those three cuts, uh, group cuts together, add up to the $355,000 reduction which you're, you are voting. The advisory committee unanimously uh, approved these cuts, and. Uh, so we accept and approve of the motion. Discussion from the floor. 
There being none, all those in favor of the motion as presented signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 2 from the Board of Selectmen, Chairman Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> I move the town amend Article 6 of the April 13, 2009 annual town meeting by deleting the sum of $959,323 and substituting the figure of $870,329 and by inserting the words and $88,994 from Waterways retained earnings after the word receipts for the purpose of balancing expenditures uh, to estimated revenues for fiscal year 2010. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Vignani. Discussion, Chairman Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This article results in a, a shortfall in, in anticipated revenues for the, for the Waterways. This shortfall was due to uh, the economy mostly where uh, slips did not come in quite the way we expected and other uh, revenues fell a little bit short. So what we do is we just take and borrow from our savings account, if I could call it that, uh, waterways return in, uh, income, and, this, and that's what this is. From the advisory committee, Mr. Constantinides. The amount, is being, the amount is being transferred from the uh, waterways uh, retained earnings is to provide to allow the uh, harbor masses oper operation uh, go through the uh, during the uh, fiscal uh, 2010. Uh, this is just to balance the budget. The money is not taxpayers' money. The money is from receipts of the operation of the harbor facilities. The advisory committee recommends approval of this motion. Discussion from the floor. Seeing no one at the mics, all those in favor of the motion as presented signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 3, Chairman Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town amend Article 9 of the April 13, 2009 annual town meeting warrant by deleting the figure of 1 million $71,642 in the fiscal year 2010 Transfer Station Enterprise Fund and substituting the figure $1,047,607 for the purpose of balancing expenditures to estimated revenues for fiscal year 2010 as follows. Salaries and wages uh, appropriated $203,346. Uh, 2010 revised, $203,346,000. Uh, expenses, $968,296. In uh, fiscal year 2010 revised, $944,261. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion, Chairman Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Again, this is the result of, of uh, estimated revenues falling a little bit short in the landfill. So rather than cut uh, uh, any actual services, the uh, director of DPW has determined that he will make cuts from the fiscal year 2010 budget as it goes along. From the advisory committee, Chairman DiLorenzo. Thank you. Uh, the primary driver of the shortfall was uh, primarily recyclable materials. As the economy dropped, so did the demand for such material, uh, and the price went along with it. There was a slight decline in our revenue on the uh, trash bags, but these declines were also offset by better revenue than expected in sticker sales and uh, favorability in assorted expenses of almost $42,000. Uh, the difference of $24,000 is being made up to balance the budget, by delaying the purchase of materials. Uh, the advisory committee recommends approval of this motion. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 4 for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Harris. I move that the town amend Article 4 
of the November 13, 2006 Special Town Meeting Warrant authorizing the Board of Selectmen to borrow funds for the financing of the sewer extension in town, including Roses Lane, and to increase said authorization by the amount of $175,000 for the purpose of providing funding for the total project costs and assesses 100% of the cost to the town through a combination of betterment assessments under that uniform unit method authorized by Mass General Law, Chapter 83, Section 15, and privilege fees authorized by said method, Chapter 83, Section 17. And the Board of Selectmen may determine what part of those costs shall be paid under each method to further authorize the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen to borrow all or a portion of said amount from the Water Pollution Abatement Trust established pursuant to Chapter 29C as most recently amended by Statute 1998, Section 78, in connection therewith to enter into a loan agreement and or security agreement with the trust and otherwise to contract with the trust and department of environmental protection with respect to such loan for any federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof. The Board of Selectmen is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with DEP to expend all funds available for the agreement with the Department of Protection to expend all funds available for the project. Is there a second? Second to Mr. Norton. Discussion, Mr. Harris. As I interpret this motion, it gives the Board of Selectmen the authorization to borrow an additional $175,000 to cover the total amount needed to complete this project. The reason for these additional funds are the result of extensive permits and designs required and finally approved by DEP. Unfortunately, this delay has also resulted in an increase in construction costs. And it's important to note to all of you that this money is to be spent, the money that has been spent and the money that will be spent for this project will only be paid by those residents and only those residents. From the advisory committee, Ms. Fenton. Thank you. Uh, Sean explained that, I think, very clearly. The advisory committee votes unanimously in support of this motion. Discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 5, from the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Danahy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I move that the town will vote to approve for each written demand issued by the collector a fee charge of $15 to be added to and collected as part of that tax as authorized by Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 60, Section 15, authorized on December 2nd, 2009. Is there a second? Second of Mr. Murray. Discussion, Mr. Danahy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, folks, this is a, shall we say, a charge. You can interpret it one of two ways, as a penalty or as you can interpret it as being a stopgap, so to speak, between the day that it's demanded that you pay your tax, your property tax, or your excise tax. Now, I know everybody here has probably paid their tax today, and this is not going to apply to anybody here. It's for those people who don't pay their tax on time. And so presently it's a $5 fee, and we are looking to increase it by $10 to $15. From the advisory committee, Ms. Curran. Thank you. The advisory board unanimously supports the motion. Discussion from the floor. There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so vote and declare a majority vote. Article 6 from the Board of Selectmen, Chairman Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Move the town vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 30B, Section 12, that authorizes the Chief Procurement Officer to award contracts for a term up to five years, including any renewal, extension, or option for certain equipment and service contracts, if it is in the best interest of the town to do so. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion, Mr. Norton. 
Thank you again, Mr. Moderator. This is more or less of a housekeeping article that will allow the town administrator, if she feels uh, it is in the best interest of the town, to uh, offer contracts for five years. From the Advisory Committee, Ms. Curran. The Advisory Board unanimously supported this and recommends that you approve this motion. Thank you. Discussion from the floor. There being none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Before I accept uh, uh, what I think will be a motion to adjourn, perhaps, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out for uh, such a short but important meeting. I'd like to thank all the volunteers, the checkers, and Madam Clerk for organizing the meeting. Thank you very much. Mr. Gentlemen, Moderator, George yes. Kelly, 450 Country Way in Situate. Mr. Kelly. I have attended town meetings for over 50 years here in the town. This is the poorest showing I have ever seen. I really feel serious consideration should be given to having it in the auditorium. The kids don't lose the use of their gymnasium, and that, I think, is a very important issue, and secondly, the extra cost to have the people set this all up, to have, if, if it's 100 people or 125, I know we don't need a quorum, and that's wonderful, but at the same time, I really want you to consider seriously using the beautiful auditorium that we have, and the speaking and everything else would be so much clearer. With less people, the uh, audio is terrible here. We need a crowd to make yourself understood towards the back of the hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. It's uh, been moved and seconded. All those in favor of dissolving the meeting signify by saying aye. All those opposed, this meeting is dissolved. <laughs>